Chapter 48, Family Worship. The gathering at Lysias's home wouldn't perhaps seem so surprising to practitioners of spiritism. From my own point of view, however, it was a new and interesting situation. In the spacious living room, a small assembly of little over 30 people was gathered. The arrangement of the furniture was very simple. Comfortable chairs were placed in rows of 12 before a platform where Minister Clarencio acted as the director, surrounded by Laura and her children. About 12 feet away, there was a large crystalline globe, about 6 feet in diameter, and whose lower part was wrapped in wires connected to a small apparatus that resembled a loudspeaker. Many questions were dancing around in my mind. Everyone had taken their seats in the large room, but I noticed fraternal conversation occurring in various groups. Sitting beside Nicholas, an older worker from Ministry of Assistance and a close friend of Lysias's family, I dared to ask him a question. This friendly companion readily answered, We're all set and just waiting for the order from communication. Our brother Ricardo is still in his childhood, so it won't be difficult for him to leave his physical ties for a few moments. Will he actually come here? Why not? Not all incarnates are chained to the soil of the planet. Like homing pigeons, which often spend much of their time flying on duty between two places, there are some incarnate spirits who live going back and forth between the two worlds. And, pointing to the apparatus in front of us, he said, This is where he will appear to us. Why the crystalline globe? Couldn't he show himself without it? I asked curiously. It's important to remember, Nicholas said thoughtfully, that our emotions can transmit forces that are likely to be disturbing to the spirit. That crystalline chamber is made of insulating material which our mental energies cannot penetrate. At that moment, workers from communication called Lysias to the phone. The time had come. We could finally begin the culminating work of the meeting. It was forty minutes past midnight, according to the clock on the wall. Noticing my questioning look, Nicholas said in a low voice, Only now is it quiet enough in Ricardo's new home on earth. The whole house is at rest and his parents are asleep. And in his new phase, he is not totally confined to the cradle. Nicholas was unable to continue. Minister Clarencio rose and asked for a true homogeneity of thoughts and a real fusion of sentiments. Everyone fell silent, and Clarencio offered a simple but moving prayer. Then, Lysias played a melody on his zither, filling the air with profound vibrations of peace and enchantment. Right afterwards, Clarencio spoke again. Brothers and sisters, he said, let us all now send Ricardo our message of love. Next, I was surprised to observe that Laura's daughters and granddaughters, accompanied by Lysias, were leaving the platform. Judith... Iolanda and Lysias took their position by their respective instruments, the piano, the harp, and the zither, while Teresa and Eliosa added their voices to form a gracious family ensemble. Melodious chords formed the echoes of a soft melody, and the music rose, gracious and divine, sounding like the celestial cooing of heaven. I felt myself being elevated to sublime spheres of thought when I heard silvery voices filling the room. Lysias and his sisters were singing a marvelous song they had composed. Using only human words, it is difficult to phrase the meaningful stanzas which were so full of spirituality and beauty, but I will try to do so in order to show the richness of affections on the planes of life that extend beyond death. Dear Father, when the night brings the blessing of rest, receive, gentle Father, our affection and devotion. While the stars sing in the light that renders them pale, Come and join in our prayer, the voice of your heart. Do not worry on the road filled with shadows of oblivion. Do not let suffering hurt you. Do not wound yourself in evil. Fear no earthly pain. Remember our alliance. Preserve the flower of hope for immortal bliss. While you sleep in the world, our awakened souls recall the dawn of this higher life. 
Look to the cheerful future. Wait for us who one day will return to the joy of the garden of your love. Come to us, generous Father. Return to the peace of our nest. Turn to the lights of the path, even though only in your dream. Forget for a minute the earth and come to sip the pure water full of consolation and tenderness from the founts of Nasolar. Our home has not forgotten you. The sacrifice, the goodness, the sublime clarity of your lessons in morality. Come across the dense darkness. Defeat the flesh, dear Father. Climb to the top of the mountains. Come to join us in prayer. At the last words of this beautiful composition, I noticed that the globe was beginning to fill with a milky grayish substance and soon displayed the friendly figure of a middle-aged man. It was Ricardo. It is impossible to describe the sacred emotion of the family as they lovingly greeted him. After having addressed his wife and children specifically, the newly arrived gave us a friendly look and asked us to repeat the pleasant filial song, which he listened to bathed in tears. When the final strains had ended, he said, Oh, my children, how great Jesus' goodness is. He had crowned our family gospel worship with the supreme joys of this night. In this room we have together sought the path of the higher realms. Many times we have received the spiritual bread of life, and it is still here that we meet again for holy incentive. How happy I am! Laura wept discreetly. Lysias and his sisters also had eyes filled with tears. I perceived that the newly arrived Ricardo could not speak easily and had only a short time to stay amongst us. Everyone else probably had a similar impression, for I saw Judith embracing the crystalline globe and exclaiming caringly, Dear Father, dear Father, tell us what you want from us. Tell us how we can be useful to your devoted heart. Then I saw that Ricardo looked intently at Laura and whispered, Your mother will soon come and join me, my little daughter. Later you shall all come as well. What more could I wish for to make me happy except to pray that the Master will bless us forever? We were all moved to tears. When the glow began once more to show the same grayish color, I heard Ricardo exclaiming as he readied to say goodbye, Ah, my children, I have something to ask you from the depths of my soul. Pray to the Lord that I may never have an easy life on earth so that the light of gratitude and understanding may remain alive in my spirit. The unexpected request moved and surprised me at the same time. Ricardo spoke carrying goodbyes to everyone as the curtain of grayish substance covered the whole chamber, which then returned to its normal appearance. Minister Clarencio prayed emotionally, and the session closed, leaving us immersed in indescribable bliss. I started toward the platform to embrace Laura as she was busy acknowledging her friend's many greetings. I wanted to express my deep impression and gratitude, but someone stopped me. It was Clarencio who lovingly said, Andre, tomorrow I'm going to accompany our sister Laura to the physical plane. If you like, you may come with us to visit your family. My surprise couldn't have been greater. A deep sensation of joy took hold of me, but I immediately remembered my work at the Chambers of Rectification. But the benevolent minister guessed my thoughts. You have a fair number of extra work hours in your favor. It won't be difficult for Genesio to grant you a week off after your first year of active cooperation. With intense joy, I thanked him, weeping and laughing at the same time. At last, I was going to see my beloved wife and children again.